Today, we're saving big money by painting our own remodel. It's Mike's first flip. First, we're gonna see what this would cost. And I need the ceilings and walls primed and painted. 3,500? All right, thank you for your time. Have a good day. Quote one, 3,500 plus paint. Okay, about 4,000. And does that include the cost of paint? All right, thanks again for your time. Have a great day. And quote two was four grand, but that included paint. So 3,500 plus paint and four grand including paint are basically the same. To just get a rough idea of what you guys might charge to prime and paint a 1,500 square foot house that I'm remodeling. All right, have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. I don't even know if I mentioned the price there, but he said around three, four grand, but it's gonna be really hard for him to know. It was tough actually getting a price out of him. The sprayer that I'm using today is called the Wagner Control Pro 170. And what's really great about it is that it can pull directly from a five gallon or one gallon paint bucket. So I'm expecting this to work really well. I already masked off this whole house before I sprayed the new drywall texture. I'll be applying a coat of this Kills 2 primer before any paint. The drywall texture that I just put on is gonna be super porous and absorb a lot of that first coat before it seals off. And that's why I'm using this, even though the paint I'm gonna be using is paint and primer in one. I've already mixed the primer up thoroughly, and so now it's time to drop in our tubes. The first thing I'm gonna do is press this button down so that it can get suction. Then I'm gonna turn this knob down to prime, and now the control knob up to two. After the primer is drawn in, it's worked into the system and then fed back out this tube. And next, we'll switch the knob from prime back to spray. The pump should really only be running when I'm spraying, so it stopped, that's a good thing. And now I'm just gonna hold my sprayer down and make sure that I've got good, steady flow. Make sure and do a test before you start spraying your walls. I'm gonna go ahead and install my sprayer tip and then tighten down the head. This makes it locked into where it can't move and you wanna make sure it's pressing forward. And you can rotate this for a vertical spray pattern or horizontal. I'm gonna hold my gun parallel to the wall and about 12 inches away from it. Come on, that's super pro. Setup went great for me, but if your sprayer's having a hard time pulling the paint from the bucket, or if your sprayer's having a hard time shooting it out, you might need to thin your paint down, but this primer is easy to spray. I'm starting in here, which is one of the far corners of the house. That way my hose isn't gonna be hitting wet paint on the walls as I move throughout the house. A white spray shield is really handy, especially in a renovation to protect things you don't wanna get overspray on. And if you don't want overspray on yourself, make sure you get a Tyvek suit and always protect your lungs with a dust mask or respirator. So I'm overlapping each one of my sprays by about half. That way I get full coverage with this primer. And you'll notice how I'm stopping and starting on each new pass, rather than just holding the trigger down. If you do that, you're gonna get big blobs and runs where you're changing directions, and you do not want that. And FYI, I should be painting the ceiling first. I just wanted to go over the wall technique first because it's easier to demonstrate, and then we'll translate that to the ceiling in just one second. So far, so good. Now we're gonna work on the ceiling. Instead of holding our gun up and down, we'll make sure that it's parallel or perpendicular to the ceiling, and I'll try and maintain the same pattern where I'm overlapping by half on each pass. It's that easy. For just a second, I'm gonna hop into time-lapse mode while I spray the next bedroom. This time, I'll make sure and spray the ceiling first, get really good coverage, and then work on the walls. It's really easy to accidentally run your hose into wet paint if you paint the walls first. That's why you always wanna start with the ceiling. Now we're in the master bedroom. I'm curious how long this is gonna take, so I'm starting a stopwatch. If I was applying a coat to the ceiling and the walls by hand with a roller, I figured this would take at least an hour, hour and a half. So let's see how long it takes. I think that's the paint. I'm gonna stop my timer and go switch to a new five gallon bucket. This is just like the setup process. Be sure to stir your primer and get good suction by priming your pump. That took 13 minutes, way faster than it would have been with a roller. Awesome. Now pretty much everything I've learned about airless spraying is from the channel Paint Life TV. Chris has got a great channel and I'll leave it linked down in the description since I'm not a pro. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to the other corner of the house and then I'll finish off with the living room and kitchen area. I'm getting really good results and the tip that I'm using is a 512. And that means that I should have a 10 inch wide spray when it hits the wall. There's a lot of different tip sizes out there. Just multiply the beginning number by two and that's how wide your spray should be. One of the videos that I linked down below will be all about spray tips. That way you can understand them fully and also choose the best one for what project you're doing. Some tips have a really narrow fan, others spray really wide, which is good for different projects. The 512 that's on this is a good all around spray tip. The 10 inch width is convenient and the edge isn't crazy hard. It feathers a little bit. All right, I'm out of bucket number two, but that's a good stopping point to switch over to the third. Up here on the ceiling, I had to do a really big repair where we took out some of this wall. I'm very happy with how everything blended out, the old texture, the new texture. I'm gonna keep this primer going across the dining room ceiling and I'll check back. I'm gonna be using my paint shield to protect the back door here. I don't wanna get overspray or paint on it and this should work great. I'll be doing an accent color that matches on the front and back door, so if you have a suggestion, leave it down below because that decision has not been made yet. And you can see that I'm going all the way across my ceiling each pass. That's totally not necessary if you don't have the floor space open. And we are now on our last wall that we need to apply primer to. Same steps as always. Make sure and get into all of your window casings though. That's very important. You wanna make sure and get 100% coverage. Super Pro. I'm really happy with that primer coat. We're gonna give it a little bit of time. It says it has one hour recoat and I've been painting for way longer than an hour. So I could start in one of those back bedrooms and paint right away if I wanted, but I'm gonna go through and fix a couple of small repairs that I found. There were a few screw holes that I filled with a little bit of joint compound and a couple of drywall imperfections that I sanded really light. Now that the joint compound is dry on each of my repairs, I'm gonna use my sander very lightly just to flatten out any high points if I've got it. Then I'll follow it up with a damp sponge to reveal the negative space around the repair. That way it's less noticeable once the paint gets applied. But before we move on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop and you need zero website building experience. With Fluid Engine, Squarespace's new state-of-the-art website design platform, it has never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity. Just start with one of Squarespace's best-in-class designer templates and then customize literally every aspect from there using Squarespace's enhanced drag-and-drop technology on desktop and mobile. There's no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace site, whether that's a physical good, digital, or a service product. With Squarespace, you can take payments online and in person by connecting a Square card reader to the Squarespace app, allowing you to keep all of your orders, inventory, and accounting up to date in person and online. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description to squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. I'm serious, I've used Squarespace for years, long before they were a sponsor and I couldn't recommend them more. So check out that link, 10% off code is Modern Builds. Now let's get back to painting. In total, I've used about 13 gallons of this primer. There's a couple places that I spot check and hit twice. But now that everything's dry, that streaking pattern is a lot less noticeable. It's not gone, but just reduced a lot. The color I'm using is called whipped cream. It's just a slightly soft off-white. There's no warm or cool tint to it. Since this is paint and primer in one, it's supposed to cover a painted wall in one coat. But because I had all of the raw joint compound, I needed to do primer first. And if I remember, it took about 20 or 30 seconds to clear the hose when I purged it with water before. So I'm gonna spray the primer in the hose back into the primer bucket. If a little bit of the paint goes in, that's no big deal. I'm a little surprised. I've been using the paint shield a little less than expected. I guess the whole high efficiency airless sprayer is working. Usually a sprayer has a pretty wide overspray fan past where you're spraying, but this sprayer does have a really sharp line that I'm able to get around doorways and stuff comfortably. I also spend quite a bit of time masking, so there's not a lot of things that I need to avoid hitting. All right, this was totally accidental, but I forgot to do the ceiling first, so let's take care of that. That's awesome. I don't see any lines like I did with the primer. 
This is where I want to note that I am not using the paint I planned on. I meant to use bare, all-in-one, paint and primer, latex. But unfortunately, I got oil-based enamel in satin Ooh. finish. Even though I told the guy at the counter what I wanted, it was just a mistake, but I didn't catch it in the store. It wasn't until I was back painting, and I didn't want to return it. We made it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a changeover of paint buckets, and we're waiting for a steady stream like that. It's my basic understanding that enamel paint is oil-based, and latex paint is water-based, and that's why I used a water-based primer. Now I've gotta try and get the hose out without hitting the walls. Super pro! People use latex on walls because it doesn't need to be as durable as an oil-based paint, and latex dries quicker and is more affordable. All right, and just like on primer, we're gonna switch over to the other corner of the house. We're gonna take care of the small spare bath and then work our way into the kitchen. We're still rerouting some plumbing and adjusting electrical, and that's why there's still some of that exposed. Any future drywall repairs, you'll see. Let's see if I can film and spray at the same time. The upside to using enamel is I can paint these doors with the same color paint. That repair, basically invisible. All right, <laughs> this is where I wanna be honest. I sprayed a little too heavy, I gotta run. So be careful of that. I'll be addressing and fixing that problem here in just a minute, but first, I wanted to finish the first coat of paint. And this is where I like to mention, if you have more painting experience than me and have good advice, please leave it in the comments below. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a break. My dad's on his way just to check everything out. He's also got another five gallon bucket of paint. I bought two, I think I might open the third, but when he gets here, I'll have him run the camera handheld and we'll go into montage mode. Whipped cream. You ready to help me film? Let's film it. Let's do it. Cool. I appreciate you grabbing that. How much did it cost? 167 plus tax. Yeah, the paint guy sold me enamel, not latex. Don't make that same mistake. I had to mix up the color while I was off getting other supplies. I came back and didn't notice that it wasn't latex. Living room, final room. Let's get it. Straight up, I remember when paint used to cost less than a hundred bucks for five gallons, and it's soon gonna be like 200 bucks, which is just crazy. We almost got all the ceilings done, but I'm glad we've got a third bucket because it's time to switch out. All right, and this bucket is brand new, so we don't need to stir it. I'm doing an income property, so I wanna make sure that I spend my money wisely, and definitely new paint and good paint is something that buyers can appreciate. The challenge though, is most people just don't understand what it is worth exactly. It doesn't just cost a grand or two to get your house painted. Now it's three, four, or five grand for an average size house. And it's not just a few hundred bucks in paint to do it yourself. I'm out almost a thousand dollars. So if you're a buyer or renter wondering why prices have gone up like they have, if you walk into a Home Depot, it's pretty easy to understand. It's expensive to do just about anything, new construction or reno. We're done. I couldn't be more excited. I don't know if all of my streaks and lines are gonna blend away or if we'll have to do another coat tomorrow, so I'll see you then and we'll check everything out. I let my paint dry overnight and unfortunately, I can still see a little bit of striping on the wall. I don't know how visible it is on camera, but unfortunately, that means I need to do a quick second coat. First, I'm gonna sand down anywhere that I found to run. There was like three spots in the whole house. Then I'm gonna suit up and do a light coat basically everywhere. If I see a wall that doesn't need any paint, I'm not gonna apply it, but most do. I don't need to go anywhere as thick as I did before. A lot of the walls just needed spot checked to cover anywhere that was bare or any of those stripes I mentioned. And that is painting complete. We'll be back tomorrow to demask everything. Before I remove the masking tape and plastic, I'm gonna cut around the perimeter of the tape since this paint has been curing for a few days and I don't wanna peel it away with the masking tape. Super pro. Make sure you've got a super sharp blade and you're using light pressure and just follow the edge of that tape. You should be able to see a line. Hey. Already the rooms feel bigger with natural light and white walls. I love that window. 
After I removed the masking plastic and paper from the floor, I was able to see what the rooms will look like with a little bit of contrast between the walls, ceiling, and floor, and I love it. I'll be doing luxury vinyl floors, so stay tuned. It's safe to say that I am pumped with how good this paint came out. If you remember what this place looked like before, it had a ton of different colors and none of them really matched. But now our color is uniform and so is the drywall throughout the house. We had to do a lot of repairs going open concept and I also skim coated and fixed a lot of these walls. You can see lines where all of the drywall panels met, especially on walls like this one before. And now it's super flat and you would have no idea there used to be a closet door right here. The contractors I talked to landed between 3,500 and 4,500. That included materials. So if you subtract the 900 that I paid, there's still over three grand in saved earnings. So even if you take away the $900 that I spent on materials that contractors get at a cheaper price, I still saved myself $1,000 a day. Now, I don't know if you make $1,000 a day. If you do, hire it out and it's no big deal. But if you don't, you can save a lot of money on your next remodel, renovation, or build by doing this yourself and still get a really professional finish. So as always, thanks a ton for watching. Make sure and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Mike's First Flip. Bye everybody.